Hey guys, Matthew, and today I want to introduce to you guys a new little test that I started running yesterday and I'll keep running uh, for the next few days. And the idea is to try to figure out how much Delirium is actually worth. So we don't have Delirium on the map device, but we do have Delirium orbs available to us. And the idea here is that I want to figure out how much is it worth to actually put Delirium on your maps? How much more money are you making every single hour that you're playing the game? And also, is there a point where there is some diminishing returns, potentially due to, for example, build not being good enough and things like that? Uh, so the methodology of the test is that we'll be doing the same exact thing for every single test. We're going to be running the same exact map the same exact way. And the map of choice is obviously going to be Burial Chambers because it's a natural T16, and it's very easy to sustain this league, especially with the Ritual League mechanic. Now, the way that I'll be running this is with uh sextants now i'm not pretty i'm not really going with any particular sextant it can be any of them and i'm pretty much min ma uh, mix and matching uh whatever i happen to have because i'm getting some from the lead mechanics from my drops in the maps themselves etc etc and we are pr pretty much just using four and we're keeping anything that adds monsters to your map no matter how good or bad they are uh so anything that adds monsters is a keeper uh otherwise we are using cartographer's chisels obviously getting that 20 percent quality and then we're pretty much all can go in the maps. I'm not rolling the maps to be incredibly, incredibly good or anything like that. Anything over 80% quantity, I'm pretty much keeping. Uh, I really am not being strict here because I want this test to be as easily to replicate for everybody as possible. And then the final thing that we're using to add a little bit of extra juice is a rusted Harbinger Scarab and a rusted Elder Scarab on every single map. Now, I didn't actually count the amount of maps that I did in the six-hour session that I did yesterday for the 0% test because it wouldn't be fair to count the number of maps that we're running at 0%, for example, versus 60% because clearly a, a Delirious map is going to take much longer to actually run and much longer to actually loot. Uh, so because of that, I, I'm going with time-based. Now... Pretty much all of them are going to be ran at the same efficiency. Now, uh, I'm going to try to keep things as close to uh, the same as possible. But obviously, there's maps, like I said, are going to take a lot more time and they're going to have a lot more investment going into them. But now let's get into the results. So like I said, six hours of running regular T16 maps. I'm not using a headhunter, so I'm not like zooming through these maps at crazy speed. I'm playing a cast on crit, very entry level build. This is about my clear speed, as you can see. It's nothing crazy. Uh, very, uh, very easy to replicate on a cheap, cheap budget. I do have a couple inspired learnings, but without the Lerm, these maps are nearly empty, and I'm not really gaining a whole lot of stacks uh, except from the ritual mechanic, which is pretty decent. Uh, so, again, let's get right into the results and uh, showcase to you guys what happened there. So, uh, we made a total of it looks like something went down in price over the the course of the day because this was done yesterday But we made about a thousand chaos and this is pure profit now If I showcase to you guys this little picture here, you'll see this is the amount of currency I started with so 100 chaos and some mapping uh, Some mapping uh, currency and the idea here uh, was that I needed enough currency to buy the initial You know scarabs and stuff like that to get going uh, but realistically, we oversustained pretty much every single one of these currencies outside of the chisels. That's the only thing that we went down in. Everything else we oversustained. Uh, and this result does not include this. Uh, this currency was all removed at the end of the test uh, because I wanted to see the pure profit. So it doesn't even really matter. And this is the pure profit. Now, this is actually not 100% accurate because it does not include maps. Now, maps this league are absolutely incredibly cheap because of how easy they are to sustain. The only real value is going to be in T15 plus maps. So I have accounted for, um, we went up 8 T16 maps and we went up uh, 17, if I remember correctly, T15 maps. I counted the T16 maps at 6 chaos each and the T15 maps at 5 chaos each, which are absolutely very very tiny prices very uh, little in terms of price uh so it, it actually is probably more than that but again i like to be very strict when it comes to my results so that people don't call me out for like overpricing things now let's get into uh the more lucky drops that we got in six hours of mapping the biggest drop that we got was pretty much two golden oils uh so it seems like that's actually what went down in price i believe so we got two golden oils and they dropped from the lee mechanic and that was pretty much our biggest drop. And we dropped one Exalt as well. So you could consider this a little bit lucky, but nothing crazy. We didn't drop a Doctor card or anything like that. Uh, one Exalt, 
two golden oils. That's our lucky drops. The simulacrum splinters mostly come from the actual lead mechanic. Uh, you have a choice to buy them pretty often. And of course, whenever the Lear mirror did spawn, I I did it. I actually did every single lead mechanic that I ran into. So if there was a breach in my map, I would do it. If there was this, if there was that. The idea is that I wanted to get uh, an idea of what it feels like to just farm regular maps. Because yes... You could say, oh yeah, but you're not going to get that every single six hours. But the thing is, if you don't get, for example, Breach, you're probably going to get, let's say, uh, Blight or something else, right? They're all going to replace each other, and I think you'll come up with some pretty similar results. Now, this is only accounted for currency, and then I added maps on top. And the result for just currency and map, uh, now, of course, this was calculated yesterday, so it seems there's a little bit of difference in price here, but 2.4 exalts per hour. So over 2 exalt per hour just running... All can go T16 maps with two very cheap scarabs and a few sextants. Very pretty decent. I mean, anything over two exalt per hour is pretty much what I would consider to be decent currency, um, especially for a non min max build. Uh, you know, my build is, like I said, very, very entry level Hello. here, very low budget. And like the most expensive thing is the pandemonious, uh, and it's not even required. So, yeah. Now let's get into the other things that we did drop that I did not account for in the uh, beginning results and that is going to be bases and luckier drops if you will. Uh, so I didn't account for any of the elder bases in this uh, result here and I didn't account for any of the uniques or cluster jewels things like that they're a little bit more RNG based. I actually didn't count those in. I did it uh, I counted them in separately and there was also a few good items that we dropped that were like rares uh, influence rares that happen to drop pretty well rolled or just pretty decent so for here we have like a high life pretty decent res flyability ring sucks that it's on a moonstone but it is what it is we've got some nice uh chaos dog gloves for toxic rain with even physical damage releases mana so like pretty decent gloves and we had a helmet that i sold for two exalt uh which was uh life like my nearby enemies take additional fizz whatever right so like pretty decent items now i don't account for those because i don't expect that you will drop them even though to be honest if you do use those elder scarabs you're guaranteed to get elder drops but it's not guaranteed to be good and it's not guaranteed to be you know uh well rolled either but you are going to get some and i'm pretty sure over the course of six hours you're going to get at least something that's worth something right if it's a claw base an elder bow base whatever it is uh, you're going to get something. So if we account for those, uh, all the more RNG base drops, we actually made 3.6 exalts per hour. So nearly four, well, a little over three and a half exalt per hour running all can go T16 maps and over sustaining those T16 maps. So for all the people who think there's no money unless you're doing like super juiced up dealers content and stuff like that, it's just simply not the case. There's always going to be currency when you're playing the game. Now, the only thing is that it comes down to is how efficient you are actually playing the game. And, you know, in those six hours, did you run three maps or did you run 30 maps, right? That's what really matters. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the results. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. So, I'm not sure why this is so small. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so... Kluzy, Luro, Gaikona, JW Player, Scott, Justin, Alex, Ollie, Matt, Kevin, Bit, Axel, and Hayden. As, of course, I also want to say a huge thank you to anybody else who supports me on different platforms uh, and anybody else who is supporting me in the past. And also look forward to the 20%, 40%, and so on test that will be coming. And then we can get a clear idea of, you know, is it actually worth it to run Delirium on your maps? Uh, and is it is it worth it to go out there and buy those Zerum Orbs, which can be a little bit tedious to buy? So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.